I'm creator of exhibits at the Bell Museum of Natural History. I'm Rachel O'Malley. And I'm Dan Handy. And Rachel and I are research fellows at the Center for Sustainable Building Research here at the U of M. And the three of us are kind of part of this core team that developed the uh, Sustainable Shelter Going Within the Forces of Nature exhibition. Well, we are, uh, we're going to give you a little bit of a tour today. We're going to talk about our favorite parts of the exhibit. My favorite part is the house with the forces of nature. So we're talking about a house, we're talking about shelter. So how do you make that real for business? Well, we thought, okay, have people go into this little house. I'm not even sure whose idea this was initially, but <laughs> which is kind of a neat thing about this collaboration. And then to try to use this window to show the outside world and to kind of give people a sense of what the, you know, why do we need the shelter? What is the function of the shelter? of shelter. So to show the weather and forces of nature uh, elements outside gets people hopefully to think a little differently. And having the, the rest of the little house here open, just a framework, lets people then look out into the rest of the exhibit. I really like the carbon guy animation. It explains the carbon cycle and how human activity has been affecting the carbon cycle in a fun and humorous way. <laughs> So this is the carbon animation I referred to. It seems like when we're talking about these, these concepts in sustainability or environmentalism, there's a lot of um, either um, misunderstood or um, miscommunicated information. And so one of the things that we were trying to do was talk about how humans are impacting the carbon cycle and why is carbon important? Because we hear, oh, we got carbon this, carbon that, carbon trading, carbon caps, but why is it important? And so this video attempts to explain, first of all, how the natural carbon cycle works and how humans are impacting the cycle and hopefully some of the changes that we can make. I really like the model houses that show how uh, house size has grown and changed over time. Um, so these are the model houses from the mid-19th century, the 1950s, today. I really like them because they make big impact right away and then there's a lot more and more to explore them. So when you first see the house, it's just, it's really startling to see the size difference between the 19th century house and the house of today. Um, the floor plan has quadrupled or more, um, but then you get to investigate more and you think about not just how much space they're taking up and how much energy they're using, but how we live in them and how we use the space differently over time. I think it's really interesting to think about how not so long ago our habits of living were very different and had a very different impact on the earth. Uh, we talked about some of our favorite things, uh, but there's lots of other things here in the exhibit to look at. The diversity of shelter wall, where we compare uh, animal shelters to human shelters, uh, different kinds of environments, how, how both uh, animals and humans have adapted to uh, different environmental conditions. The other thing, of course, that I really like is the termite mound and the rodent burrows, where we kind of reveal a sort of hidden structure of uh, the cre structures created by, by other animals. There are some interactives, like the permeable pavement uh, interaction, where you can watch how water uh, moves through the sort of built environment. I like the wall sections, too. And it's not just because I worked on them. Um, basically, we're trying to explain what happens with a wall or why walls are important. What are the functions that a wall performs in a structure? And what we're really trying to show is that there's a lot of different ways that those functions can be met. And so we've got um, a series of nine different wall sections that show different ways that structure can happen in a wall, different ways that they can be insulated, different types of materials and the, the different sources of those different materials, and, and the different ways that they can be finished, both from the exterior to keep uh, rain and snow and wind and that sort of thing out, and on the inside, the, the side that you live with on a day-to-day -day basis. And so they're kind of cool because you can see all the many, many different types. Another interesting part of the exhibit are the um, panels we have on the wall that talk about both the life cycle of materials from their extraction in the earth to 
through their use and eventual disposal, as well as a couple of panels that compare uh, energy use and water use in homes and show ways that we usually use energy and water and ways that we can use them more efficiently um, or more responsibly. Those were really fun to work on. Um, we got a great illustrator to help us um, get the point across in a sort of lighthearted and humorous way. Um, but they also contain a lot of information about how we normally use energy and normally um, use water in our homes and provide um, suggestions for how we can do it better. I think they should come because where else can you put your head into a greenhouse art piece? There's a lot of different interactive pieces in the exhibit. That's why I would come. You can flick light switches, you can watch dynamic glazing change from tinted to a clear state. You can see the difference of different types of glass by putting your hand underneath and feeling the difference in heat. I think there's just a lot of different things to explore. So, you know, you can watch a cartoon, which is really entertaining, but you can also sort of um, get really up close and personal, complicated cartoons and graphics that allow you to explore the details of how your house works. As part of the exhibit, we set up the Icon Solar House, which was the University of Minnesota's entry to the 2009 Department of Energy Solar Decathlon competition. It was a great opportunity for us because after the competition it came back and uh, was literally sitting in storage until we were able to set it up as part of the museum exhibit. And it has been an overwhelming hit. Kids, adults, uh, faculty, lay people come through the house and they really get an opportunity to see high-tech solar. All of the heating, cooling, and electricity comes from solar power for this house. Um, and it's designed to perform in Minnesota on a year-round basis. But on top of that, it's a really nice space to be in. You can watch a movie, you can wash dishes, you can take a shower. It, you know, it has to function like a normal house. Um, and uh, people get to come through and actually see how it can work.